of our free online course uh, to learn to map public transport in open street maps. This event is organized by Trufi Association. I'm Ted Johnson, Trufi's communications director based in Madagascar. Trufi organizes webinars bi-monthly to discuss how transport can become more inclusive and community driven. The Spanish version of this course was launched a couple of months ago. So this is our second launch event for the course, the launch for the course in English. The language uh, public transport in his community. Um, it would be great to know where you're joining us from and how you heard about this webinar. Would you please put that into the chat? A uh, little bit about Trufi Association. We are an NGO that helps make public transport, active transport, and sustainable transport easier and more attractive in the global south. We have mobile applications all over the world to help people navigate and undertake projects to foster the use of collective transport. Uh, our first mobile application was in Cochabamba, Bolivia. And while it was a big deal that we were able to create a journey planner app that allows people in Cochabamba to get from point A to point B, we made the choice from the beginning that we would use OpenStreetMap as our data source. We developed tools to transform OSM data into the data standard used by more than 10,000 transit agencies in more than 100 countries. This data standard is called GTFS, which stands for General Transit Feed Specifications. And you'll hear more about that from one of our presenters. Uh, something that has always held Trufi back a bit is that mapping public transport is not as intuitive as many other things in OpenStreetMap. So we had developed our own support document, but we never had a fully structured methodology for training people to map public transport. We partnered with Mobility Hub, a Colombian social enterprise, and they understood immediately the power of a global network of well-trained transport mappers. They took what we know about mapping pub public transport in OSM, and they turned it into the course that is now available. Our speakers today are going to talk more about the power of community-generated transport data. Our first speaker is Alazar Tekle from Addis Map Transit. Alazar led one of the first independent projects to use our Trufi Core code, which is the basis for the Addis Map Transit app. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat, and we'll also have time for Q&A after all of the presentations. So I'll turn it over to Alizar now. All right. Thank you, Ted. Hello, everyone. My name is Alazar Tekli, and I currently manage the uh, Adisma Transit Project, and I also am a jazz te te technician at the Adisma company. To say a little bit about our history, we are a team of uh, OSM mappers that started our journeys on 2009. And we were so be believing on the false uh, principles and resources that it's very important for the development of countries like us. So we started our journey with OpenStreetMap and continued to develop different services based on that. And our first goals when we started was first to provide free and open source map for Addis Ababa and in the future for all of Ethiopia. And also we want to provide the public with uh, transport information services, like look where the bus stations are located and where the companies or businesses or other entities are located. The other thing is empowering businesses through the use of GIS and open source maps. And with that, we were, we were able to create a lot of awareness in terms of the community and also different businesses. And we were able to provide various uh, uh, projects based on the OpenStreetMap uh, system and technology. And the next thing is localizing OpenStreetMap app. So others in different areas can use their own local languages and based on that, build on top of that map services. So far, we were able to participate on different uh, events, exhibitions, and we were able to showcase the use of OSM in Ethiopia. And through starting since 2009, we have been able to significantly contribute to the amount of data that was on OSM for Ethiopia. 
And the last, the other thing is uh, we created the first uh, route to market or delivery services or distribution or mapping services for such businesses and for mass reproduction. But meanwhile, doing all of that, we realized that the new frontier should be public transport because first our country was fo focused on uh, achieving the UN Sustainable Development Goals 11, which focuses on mobility and sustainable cities. And the other thing is, once the, pub, the public gets digital information on the public uh, transport, they can go further and do different added services and they can be well informed and the data can be democratized and everybody can benefit from it. The other is helping operators and authorities to make informed decisions because through such data, everybody can plan for what their next move. Every transport services can be systematically placed and analyzed. So with that, we started uh, to develop uh, the first sample map, which has no GPS or GIS data support in the, from the, in the back. And it was developed based on graphic designer softwares. And our main target was just to showcase where the bus stations are located and which buses, which areas they have already passed, where they are currently located in the bus stations or shelters in the routes ahead. But these are first, first very static and they can never be uh, updated instantly. And they can never be used to calculate or analyze or uh, search for various options. And the other thing is, whenever we want to update, it requires reprinting because they're supposed to be posted on the bus shelters uh, all over the city. And lastly, they are not easy to understand for any random commuter because they are very well complex and they don't show the actual maps on the street. Hence, we started our journey with this and we wanted to see what other op op opportunities or alternatives were there. And lucky for us, we were first contacted by World Resource Institute, which has uh, already collected the data for Addis Map for Addis Ababa and completely digitized and developed the first GTFS data set. So with that, we mapped all of that data on OSM uh, first, just because we are very familiar on OSM and we have no technical background on the GTFS. So we wanted to see how it works and with that, we were able to extract uh, the GTFS uh, version for from OSM. So that way, one of the main beliefs uh, we did that is because first we need to continuously maintain the data set. So by publishing it on OSM, anybody can contribute towards that. And also our main uh, application source or our main uh, service is based on the Trophy Core and we use OpenTree Planner for backend processes. So that, we, that is actually formally established with uh, OSM systems. So that is another uh, more factor for us to uh, continue working on OSM and extract the GTFS data set from, data set from that. And hence the first Addismap Transit demo mobile app was created and launched for public review. Some of the success stories since uh, beginning our journey with uh, transit services is first on around to the end of 2019, we were one of the, we were competing in the first Digital Transport for Africa Innovation Challenge grant. And we were one of the four winners to win that grant. And through that, we were able to plan for different uh, upgrades, changes, and uh, plans for Addismap Transit. The other thing through that uh, grant, uh, news we were able to get a lot of media coverage and namely uh, we were hosted on the, the german radio or Deutsche Welle international and one of the most exciting opportunities we had was able to, to present our project and our work at the sustainable mobility and climate week that was held in dakar and afterwards through this uh, grant we were able also to completely move our application into open source uh, fully open source because initially we were using uh, map tiler service which is not a uh, hundred percent open source or fully open source and free and the other thing we were using uh, google geocoding uh, services so we create we created our own custom tile servers based on the open play, uh, open street map uh, data open street map apis and other open source uh, technologies. And the other thing, it's very ready for customization and it covers all of Africa. And uh, one of the good things uh, that came out of it is it, 
that currently Shagarbas uses it on its own uh, integrated transport service, which is currently provided through a web portal. And the other thing was just to, to publish the Redux React, React uh, powered uh, Artismap Transit web application because it has additional features which enables us uh, to provide more information for people that want to do analysis and in-depth study into the transport network. And currently, uh, we have already collected all the minibus networks of Addis Ababa, pu published it on OpenStreetMap, and also in included it on our on our latest release of the Addis Map Transit web and mobile applications. And all this application can be freely downloaded and used from GitHub, FDroid, which is a very well known open source applications uh, store, Play Google Play Store, and uh, Apple's App Store. The other thing we currently we finalized our work on focus discussion, uh, focus group discussion, and a field survey that is mainly focused on finding out the gender gap in public transport operations, planning, and services. So with that, we are on our way to develop an in-depth analysis on the current situation and provide uh, recommendations and share with uh, relevant stakeholders. And the other uh, thing that unlawed, this grant allowed us is that we were able to provide capacity building training for the Adsawa Transport Bureau, which was focused on data collection, validation, and visualization. But this is just a, a snapshot of what can be done to, to show them what can be done with open source mapping and how that data is collected. We are hoping to go further into this in the coming year and uh, do more of more trainings. And our roadmap currently uh, only shows that we are uh, we have only collected the minibuses, and we'll currently we'll start collecting the Ambassa and Chagar bus networks in uh, next week. And in the future, we hope to provide all the red uh, typed uh, the, the public transport service providers because those are not some of them are informal, and some of them require to be uh, properly. Uh, organized. So with that, we will continue forward with uh, uh, including all the transport networks of Addis Ababa. And in terms of technology and operation, we are going to start, as I said, we're going to start uh, for collecting the buses and publish it on OSM and share with the relevant stakeholders. And also, we are working on forming a, a working group that, that uh, includes the transport operators, uh, interested uh, researchers, uh, application developers, uh, technologists, everyone that is very interested in term in contributing towards the uh, betterment of the mobility sector in Ethiopia. And the other thing is we are planning to develop uh, an analytical dashboard that is very aimed for uh, researchers, operators, and decision makers. So the, the, the data can be used in two ways. One is for commuters and the other is as a feedback mechanism for uh, operators and uh, the, the decision makers or the authorities. With this, I conclude my presentation. Thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity. If there are questions, uh, I'm your work. I'll take. Okay, thank you, Alizar. Uh, yes, if you have questions for Alizar and about the work that they've done in uh, Addis Ababa, you can put those questions in the LinkedIn chat and, um, and we'll answer them after all the presentations. Uh, is Jackie here? Our next speaker is yes. Jacqueline M. Yes, Klopp. Yes, I'm here. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. That's <laughs> Very okay. Much here. Uh, all right. Thank you, Jackie. Well, Jacqueline is the director of the Center for Sustainable Urban Development. She's a research scholar with a focus on sustainable transport, land use, and technology's impact on transportation and land use. Um, she's authored academic articles on African infrastructure and is involved in urban mapping projects. She co-founded the Digital Matatus Consortium and Digital Cairo for open transport data. So if you have any questions for Jackie, also put those in the chat on LinkedIn. Great. So my presentation is going to be a, ra a rather high level one. I want to really leave you with the idea that it is absolutely critical that if you care about our cities, 
that you really engage in this question of mapping. We know that we're in this very large technological transition that's happening across the globe, and there's new opportunities to use transportation, uh, to use uh, technology and the kinds of data that comes out of it to improve our transportation systems. And then there's very complicated ways that some of this is also impacting our transportation systems through new services like ride hailing and so forth. We also know we're in a big energy transition with the climate and ecological crisis and the way that our transportation systems are structured currently uh, leads to a lot of emissions and contributes to that crisis. We are also in the middle of an urban transition in big parts of the world, including Africa, um, where cities are being built and how they get built and how their transportation systems work will have a huge impact on the quality of living in those cities. And particularly, we have very large public health problems around our transportation systems from large numbers of crashes, which is the number one killer of youth globally, and a very, very serious problem of air pollution. And the transport sector contributes heavily to that. So as Elazar mentioned, one of the ways that we've agreed as a global community to address this is through our sustainable development goal that targets transport. And it's not an adequate target, but it's an important one. And it focuses on providing access to safe, affordable, accessible, sustainable transport systems um, for all and improving road safety. And one of the main reasons or ways that doing this is really through expanding public transport um, with special attention to the needs of vulnerable populations. Now, when we get to many parts of the world, um, the way that transport, public transport works is that it's provided by many operators uh, and small companies that produce you know, systems involving things like minibuses, rickshaws, motorcycle taxis. And a lot of this, the vast majority of this kind of public transport uh, provision is actually unmapped and often poorly understood. And it's a huge global equity issue because a lot of the resources going to improve our public transport systems globally are not reaching these systems um, where that the majority of people use. And so that is a really big issue. And then, of course, the global transport emissions are predominantly caused by single vehicles in the global north. Um, and that's having huge impacts on, on global south uh, communities. So there's a very, very big picture issue here around why we need to do mapping. Because currently, we have very little uh, data about these systems. Uh, even the formal systems, like the you know, more formal systems, like the bus systems, like Elazar was saying, the Shagar system, like in, in Addis, we didn't have good digital data for those systems before Addis Map started to do its project. Uh, focusing on informality, and we got support from the Rockefeller Foundation. And the idea behind this mapping, given those big problems that I talked about, was to leverage just the most basic technology, which was the GPS and a cell phone, and actually GPS units, which you can uh, buy, to collect missing data on the Matatu system. And we did have a theory of change around how we were approaching this. We had to start from the bottom up and do it ourselves, the DIY um, data collection. We had to start figuring out where the main terminals, uh, you know, where does it, where are the routes going by talking to people and then actually starting to ride those routes. So we worked with University of Nairobi students, uh, like the one you see here in this picture, to basically start tracking and finding the longitude and latitude of where these vehicles stop and, and where their origin point is and where their final point is. So basically their trips. And we realized pretty quickly that we need to put that data in some kind of standardized format 
And the reason that is important is that, um, as Elazar was talking about, there's all these open source tools and uh, resources that you can use once you have your data in a standardized format. And one of the most common formats is this general transit feed specification, which came out of transit agencies in the global north trying to find a way to structure their data about their uh, systems so that it could be used on applications like Google Maps so that passengers can figure out how to use it. As I was saying that we had at, with digital matatus, I'll just go back so you can see um, the, the players here. We had a strong theory of, of change around how we wanted to do this mapping. And um, as I was mentioning, the general transit feed specification was a, a really important step forward uh, in terms of trying to do this sort of mapping for these minibus systems. And it's not that easy, and often these systems don't fit so well into that structure, and that's an ongoing conversation about how to improve the standard so it, it fits better with the kinds of um, uh, public transport forms in, in different cities like the Matatus. So it's a set of files um, that relate to each other around trips and um, timetables and so forth. And, and we can send a little information to all of you about the GTFS format. Um, and as Alizar was saying, it's really, really important to um, have all of this data, which is anonymized, it's not personal data, open. And that helps at so many levels to uh, spread more planning and more innovation around these systems. Uh, and the other part is really um, visualizing it. So um, process that took a long time actually for us because we were just starting uh, and exploring how to do this early on, but now there's a lot more knowledge and tools. Um, it led to this visualization of the Matatu system in Nairobi. And this was really important. It was designed almost like a London tube map. And the idea was to show that this is the transport system in the city. And, you know, it has a structure and we can start thinking about how we can improve it. Um, the, the data allowed us to start doing some network analysis, and we're starting to see more and more of this in different cities um, that have never done this before. You could see with the data that we got from uh, Nairobi that a lot of the routes all end in the center of the city, and there's these large terminals, and it's very hectic for a passenger that wants to go from one side of the city to the other. They have to do a lot of transfers. Uh, that also makes it more costly, so you're, e you're paying each time. And this is often the kind of system you get when private mm -hmm. actors predominantly drive it. And so now we can start saying, like, well, how would we improve this for passengers, and how would we negotiate maybe with the operators to improve the service? Because in the end, we want mapping, not just for mapping's sake, but to really make a difference um, in people's lives. The other kind of analysis that started to happen once you had the standardized data is you could look at um, access to different services. Uh, the World Bank took our data and started looking at access, for example, um, by different transport modes to hospitals. And this is just like physical access, obviously not whether you can afford it or not. Um, and you could start to see that hospitals were very, access was very central, uh, centered in the center of the city and people in the peripheries did not have as, as good access. So now you could say, well, maybe we need hospitals in those more out in the outskirts or, you know, we need to improve the way that um, people access these hospitals. Um, so it allows you to see some of these access problems um, more clearly once you have the data. You can start to do a lot of different analyses. And then what's really important um, is that we provide passenger information services. And this is something that the sector itself, the minibus uh, sector, the Matatu sector is very keen on because if you can have better information for passengers, 
people are more likely to take that form of transportation and more likely feel comfortable in it, um, including other forms of information like safety and as Alizar was talking about, looking at gender equity is also very important. But as a first start, once you have the standardized data, you can start to put it in these different apps. So we were able to get our data into Google Maps. I think we were one of the first African cities uh, you know, to have, Nairobi was one of the first African cities to have this available. Um, and people who don't know that I was involved in this would say to me, oh, it's so great. Now I know where to find my Matatu stop. And that's like really, really important um, as a service. And so uh, one of the uh, learnings that came out of doing digital Matatus is that this is very important and powerful to do. What's, what's unfortunate is that it is not really being supported in so many cities that really need this mapping, even though a lot of expensive projects are going in without really paying attention to how they connect to the, um, you know, the existing forms of transport. And then often those projects are not very successful. I just came back from Cape Town where people are talking about how much money they put into a rapid bus but yet the majority of people are still using the minibus taxi and it's they're not connecting. Um, so, uh, so it becomes really important then, given this very big problem that we support across the globe. Um, and we focus a lot with digital transport for Africa, obviously on Africa, that uh, to, to really support this kind of mapping and provide tools and resources and networks of mappers like Addis Map um, to those in the cities, both in their tech sectors and their transport sectors, and, and then also in the city itself, with you know the ability to, to build these kinds of data. Um, and I'm just gonna end with, uh, and so I'm, I, you, should, you should definitely visit if Digital Transport for Africa and take a look at the all the resources that are available if you're thinking about doing mapping. And I just wanna say Trufi Association is a partner of Digital Transport for Africa. And uh, you know we're a very strong supporter of, of open street map data. And then being able to convert uh, from that layer to creating a GTFS feed. Um, and when we have GTFS feeds, scraping some of that data and making sure it's on OpenStreetMap. And I hope we'll talk about that a little bit more, Ted. Um, I'm just gonna end with this. This is the big message that I, I was trying to convey. And that is that really um, data has become really, really important and increasingly available with our new technologies. City run on data really becomes an incredibly powerful player in that city. And in our vision, we believe that the city uh, government, um, a national government that really owns, collects, and uses this data, not external actors and tech companies, but really this needs to be um, a bottom-up and democratic process, as Elazar was saying. Thank you, Jackie. Um I think that one of the things you demonstrated was uh, how when we encourage people to map and when people want to volunteer for our Truthy Association, and one of the first things we want to do is encourage them to learn to map. Um, and it seems a little bit abstract sometimes why that's so important. And I think uh, your presentation and the presentation of Alizar shows that there's real tangible benefits of having good digitized data uh, that is extracted from OpenStreetMap. Our next speaker is Jesus Diaz. He's the director of Mobility Hub um, uh, based in Colombia. And Jesus is going to give us a quick overview of the mapping course. Thank you, Ted. Hello, everyone. My name is Jesus Antonio Diaz. I am the founder and CEO of Mobility Hub in Colombia. We are a consulting team based in, in Latin America, and our vision is to support government and agencies uh, supporting technical capabilities 
And that is why we created the educational platform of Mobility Hub. So I am going to present the general contents and the structure of the course, Mapping Public Transport Data on OpenStreetMap. There is a free course, and it is certified by the Trophy Association and the Mobile, and Mobility Hub. The development of this course is based on two objectives. The first of them is to explain the process of mapping public transport data on the OpenStreetMap collaborative platform, which allows the management of maps from open data, as well as sharing geographic information on road networks and public transport systems. Secondly, it is very important for us to motivate the creation and strengthening of a global network of open street map mappers trained to develop effective processes for mapping public transport systems. This knowledge is very valuable and has great potential both in the creation of technological applications for travel planning as well as in the world of strategic transportation modeling in urban and urban planning. Regarding to the structure of the course, it is divided in two parts. The first, oriented to provide the basic concepts, and the second one, oriented to, the pra to practice exercises and describe the mapping process. As I mentioned, the, the, this first part is oriented to, towards the basic concepts. So the first session provides the introduction to the course, as well as the objectives, the content and structure. And there is also a presentation of the companies, Mobility Hub and Truth Association, which made it possible. In the second session, we answer the question, why is it important to map public transport data? Additionally, the priorities and recommendations that must be taken into account when carrying out these activities and the explanations related to the process. In session three, um, we describe in general, in a general way, the OpenStreetMap service the elements used in mapping and the advantages of using the platform. Session four, in this session, we will see the step-by-step -step to create an OpenStreetMap account, a process that's, that is necessary to start the mapping process. In session number five, we will learn about the GTFS files, which are the main input for the development of travel planning applications. And in session six, we explain the main features of the Java editor for OpenStreetMap, or commonly known as JOSM, the type of licensing it uses, the versions over time, and the files that it allows to read and edit. This session also explains the installation process, and for both the Java environment and the Jo the JOSM editor. Now, in the second part of the course, we start with the practical sessions. So in session seven, we will, we will see in detail the JOSM homepage and the data download process, uh, the background image management, the layer, the layer management, among others. In session eight, we will find a description of the different types of files compat compatible with JOSM, that is the files that contain the information on the layout of the roads that we will go in, that, that we are going to map. It is important to have this information whether in GPX or KML formats, among others. In session nine, we will learn about how how to preview or do the consistency check of the OSM elements in the area that we are that is going to be mapped for public transportation. It is worth keeping in mind that some areas could have inconsistencies in in the OSM elements. For example, 
um, overlapping of roads. So this session explains what the problem is, how to identify it, identify those cases, and how to solve it. Now, in session 10, we explain how to download the baseline or the guideline information for the public transport road layout, how to upload this information in JOSM, and how to personalize this information. In session 11, we learn the step by step for creating a relationship and how to divide the OSM elements when necessary. And finally, this session shows how to keep a, a, a relationship. Once the relationship is created, all the objects that, that were created must be uploaded, uploaded on the server. For this reason, in session 12, we will see the process to upload, upload this data and generate the rela uh, relationship identifier. With this ID, we can monitor the layout and verify the consistency of the result. In session 13, we will understand the procedure for activating uh, the remote, remote control option in JOSM, a process that allows the program to create a web server and, and load the public transport road labels. The last two sessions correspond to special cases that may occur during the road mapping process, such as the case when there is no network for the public transport road that should pass through. And a second special case, section 15, we have the configuration of public transport stops when applicable. We already know in Latin America, for example, or Africa, um, we still have a good proportion of informal uh, transportation uh, compared with the structured and formal services. Um, so in our regions, there is not always a regulation of stops at certain points. That is the reason why this course um, contemplate the creation of roads without stop points. And in the final part of the course, we will find an extra session where the spreadsheet that contains public transport road information is explained in detail. For those who know the work that Leonardo does in the world of mapping, here we reveal some of his great secrets. And finally, the, the student must complete a test at the end of the course which is the requirement to validate the course and continue with the certification process. Now, uh, in this second part of the presentation, we will talk about how to access the course. The short way to access the site right now uh, is using the QR code that appears on the screen. However, I will show you the process step by step uh, for this recording. For this, we are going to enter the browser with the address www.mhub.com.co. That takes us to the main page. Now we go to the courses option and, and click. This take, takes us to the interface where the different learning areas are, are located. So we click on the category mobility. Now in the list, now you can see the list of available courses. So we click on the preview course label over the image of the mapping public transport data course. This brings us to the enrollment option. If we already have an user account, we just scroll down to the bottom of the self-registration option and click on the continue button. This brings, um, this brings us to the uh, login um, page when 
remember when when we already have a user account we enter our username or email and the password to access the platform in the case when when um, do not have yet a user account we can scroll to the bottom of the select and click on the selected option create a new account we will fill out the form with the username and password which must meet uh, some uh, security requirements then we continue filling out the email address email confirmation name short name city and the country you reside and finally as complementary information we fill out the gender telephone number and the sector where we work and finally we have to click on the uh, create my new account the system sends an email to the registered email with the activation or confirmation link once we enter that link we can confirm the account and continue to the process with our user created on the platform and registered in the course when we found the course sessions that i described in the last in the in the last part um, each session consists of the name a brief summary of the session content and explanatory video an important um, feature to keep in mind is that the course content is un unlocked as you progress through each session for example in order to see the video number two we must have previously seen the welcome video since this is a course that requires the viewing it, viewing it uh, sequentially regarding to the videos these are short ones of four to ten minutes with specific topics and procedures it's very nice to see them They're, they are very short and as an example uh, we have to for example the welcome session which lasts around four minutes here i share another example from session seven where it is shown in detail how to work with JOSM directly in the application. And we have also developed some group sessions using uh, interview format with experts seeking to alternate to a perhaps more informal and relax, relaxed type of session. So as I mentioned at the beginning, we can follow this process which is very simple, or we can also use the QR code that appears on the screen right now. And remember, this is a free course available to everyone. Please let us know about your experience and your, and your feedback. We will be very happy to receive your feedback about uh, uh, and your opinions about the course. In this way, I have finished my presentation regarding the content of the course. Thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity. Tell your, your mic is turned off. Sorry. Ah! Okay, I just wanted to say thank you, Jesus. It's been great working with you and with the other people at Mobility Hub while we've been getting this course and putting it together. Just highlighting some of the apps that we have all over the world. We have Notre Dame My Bike in Germany that is supposed to help cyclists within Hamburg um, navigate through the city. This is to reinforce the active mobility advocacy that is that is um, in the public transport ecosystem. We also have motor motor apps in uh, of course Taknavi in Herenberg. In um, Africa, we have the Trotro app, a byproduct of an EFT project project, and we have a lot of routes in there that's supposed to that helps 
people that want to navigate the city using public transport. Aliza has talked so much about his work with Addismat, so I'll just leave that. Within um, South America, we had our first ever Trophy app. That was a vision by Christoph, our CEO, and uh, he built a team with Luz, Leo, Samuel, Gradis, and many others that collected um, bus routes of um, Cochabamba. We have Bus Boy, that is by Leo, and so many other apps. This is a very beautiful public transport called Trophy in Cochabamba. And before uh, Trophy came in, we, there was no documentation of the bus stops or, or the routes. And it's a missed opportunity that would help people, um, locals or visitors, to be able to navigate through the system because collective modes like this are much more better than single modes. Um, of transport. So how did we do it? First of all, um, we collected the transport uh, bus stops and routes data using uh, OSM tracker. Um, there is much more information about this in our course content. So I will entreat you to just go sign up, take a look, and you'll be able to map public transport within your city um, when you're done. We have more than uh, 500 routes currently in Cochabamba, and this route is um, they are in our our app called the Trophy app in Cochabamba. Just a little bit about how it's done: we collect the data, we digitize this in OSM. Um, Jesus has talked about this. We transform this into GTFS. We use OTP, Open Trip Planner, and put this in our in our app. This app that we have done and people are using to navigate um, through the city of Cochabamba has more than 100,000 installs, which we are very happy for. This shows the need um, to use, to digitize public transport, to map public transport for people to be able to use it. We have testimonials from people that say that I've moved to Cochabamba and I had no idea how to navigate the public transport system but because of your app I was able to do that and we are very grateful for that. What We, we are a very community-centered uh, organization and NGO so we also take a lot of feedback from our users when there are new routes that needs to be updated or when there's a change in the route. And also if um, you want to do surveys about how safe the routes are, this can be done. We at Trophy, we are very passionate about how we can use the power of the communities, people that use public transport, um, our free and open source um, software that is our trophy core is available on GitHub and our new course content to empower people to be able to map public transport um, not only for them but for other people that would come into their cities and be able to navigate as as easy um, as it should be so yes thank you very much I hope the audio is better uh, this time thanks Leo and Ted one of the wonderful things that's also happening in Cochabamba is that for people who aren't trained to use OpenStreetMap, they have the ability to send a screenshot to us through WhatsApp, and they can draw on that screenshot corrections to the route. So those people don't know how to use OpenStreetMap, but they can still submit those routes. And people who are trained uh, uh, with OpenStreetMap can look at those routes and do the corrections. So we're getting lots of feedback, but it all comes back to being able to have trained people who know how to, to uh, trace routes in OpenStreetMap and contribute them. So uh, we have some questions that have been submitted while the uh, presentation is going on, so and they've been curated. So if uh, uh, we want to put them on the screen, I will read them. And uh, if it's not obvious who should answer them, we'll figure that out. All right, so I might have missed a methodology due to the audio issues. Can Jacqueline speak on the tools used to map minibus transport and matatus in Nairobi? 
Yeah. Uh, so we were mapping uh, quite a while back. So we had to find whatever <laughs> tools we could. And we, uh, we found an app, a Google-based app called uh, MyTracks, which was used by joggers uh, to follow their routes and see mm -hmm. how far they go. Um, so we were using that. <laughs> and then as a backup, we used GPS units. Um, since that time, which was 2012, and we've updated the, date, the data since, um, you know, a lot of new tools, like the wonderful tools you'll find at Digital Transport for Africa and the tools that Trufi Association has developed, um, you know, have, are available. So we didn't have those at that time. And there is a paper that describes all the, uh, all the methodology, I'm happy to share that with uh, with everyone. Um, and there's also a little bit of a comparison of some of the different mapping tools that was done, and that's available on our Digital Transport for Africa site as well. So thanks for your question. I think one of the things that I wanted to mention about the Digital Matatus project, uh, and again, it speaks to the power of having people around the world who are trying to do this, is that able to take the GTFS file from Digital Matatus and push it into OpenStreetMap because it wasn't originally in OpenStreetMap and we were able to push it in and then we had a team of high school students in Duitama, Colombia go through and start to validate and correct it and, 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 and fix it. So it's, it's just a, an amazing thing when we have people who are trained and motivated to do this. So the next question um, is did the team in Addis decide to use OSM independently of Trufi or was it Trufi that suggested using OSM? All right, thank you. So that was, uh, it has two sides. First, uh, we were always working on OSM. That was our main est establishment uh, purpose uh, since the past. But the main reason we chose uh, opposite map for uh, this project for it was first it was very much it has a lot of it, we got a lot of support from Tufi when we're, we were trying to experiment with the GTFS data set we were having a lot of issues because it requires experience and there wasn't uh, a lot of uh, resources at the time there were a few but we didn't have the training or the background on that so we chose OSM because we were able to have a lot of support when it we needed technical uh, the, the works and also it was easier for us to generate uh, the GTFS data from OSM because there was already prepared tools and uh, scripts that are made by Trophy community and other OSM contributors. So that's our main reason uh, to choose this OSM. Okay, thank you. What's the next question? Okay, another question for Alizar. Uh, says, would you please say a few words about the challenges at its map faced and how you tackled them. Okay, thank you, Agro. Uh, well, initially there was, uh, we never had uh, the, the, the te technical background I stated earlier, but farther than that, when we were working with uh, World Resor WRI or World Resource Institute, the GTFS data, when we wanted to publish the GTFS data, we need to get uh, permission from the government because at the end of the day, uh, it, we had no uh, participation during the data collection. So we had to obtain permission from the both uh, entities since they were the uh, uh, people in charge of the data collection or the people that initiated the digitization process. So one of the, the things were convincing uh, the Transport Bureau to allow us to just publish it on opposite map and through uh, in the, the continuous support of uh, WRI, we were able to get that on, onto OSM. And the other is just keeping uh, the data maintained and updated because right now the, the Aitsaba city is growing rapidly and there are different uh, fleets uh, or services that are coming in and going out service and new routes opening and closing. So for that, the other advantage is that also uh, comes to the reason why we chose Addis, uh, opposite map because on that, people can contribute uh, willingly or anytime they see new things or they can just easily communicate uh, to any OSM community to integrate that uh, new route or new data. And third, at the government, we need to, we had, we weren't able to find uh, the opportunity to build the capacity of the government in terms of sharing how the data is collected, the technical works, but 
through the Digital Transport for Africa initiative and through that grant, we were able to provide uh, uh, startup trainings. But right now, with the formalization of uh, such a formal course and with this coming online, we are we will it will provide us with enough uh, material to continue training the government, other communities to continue maintaining the data, not just to depend on frequent data collections. Thank you all. Uh, we have we, we experienced some some technical issues with the dead connection, and um, I'm happy to be here. Thanks to Jacqueline, to Alassa, to Jesus, to Angela, uh, to join us to this webinar, and I'm happy to be here in, in the backstage and now uh, uh, talking. And thanks for that of all of our uh, assistants. Thanks for coming and keeping touch with Trophy with Enhab, and uh, thanks for all. We are closed on our webinar now and see you again. Bye-bye.